This is a video on how to install a crankshaft in a C11 engine, check bearing clearance and torque down procedure. We've got our engine block on an engine stand with the crank tunnel facing upwards and we're going to go through and put our main bearings in. Now before you put your bearings in you want to clean with a bit of brake cleaner and a lint free rag the tunnel where the bearing sits and on the cap as well and it doesn't hurt to clean the back of the bearings when you pull them out of the packet just to make sure there's nothing on them. So this is the upper bearing and this is the lower bearing as you can see it's got no hole in it only the upper bearing does. There's two different types of bearings you need for the, for the crankshaft. One, four and seven have three holes in it and um, the rest, two, three, five, six have just one lubrication hole in there. Installing the bearing half into the tunnel I find it easier to put the tab side on first and then push the other side down. Um, if you do it the opposite way I worry about the tab catching on the groove and shaving bits of the bearing off. You can do it the other way, you just got to be careful how you go about it. These are the main caps. Um, the So this is the lower part of the bearing, you can see it's got two tabs. Um, it's got the same part number for all seven so you could mix them up though I keep them together out of the box it's, it's just the way I do it um, the only thing you got to watch out for is the upper ones with the one lubrication hole versus three other than that you can't mix these ones up it's, it's important to make sure there's no oil or material on the back of the bearing or inside the cap before you put the bearing on or that will affect your oil clearance. Uh, notice where the bearing tabs are on the block and on the cap they go down on top of each other and I always torque that up first. It doesn't say to in cat sys for this particular engine but older cat engines they'll tell you to do that step is to torque the bearing tab of the cap side down first so I just do it with everything if it doesn't say I just carry that on. The reason behind doing it that way is that if the bearing needs to move at all it's better to move on the plain side than the tab side because uh, the tab side can catch I assume that's why they do that. So everything's clean our cranks clean and ready to go our main bearings are in the block we lay our crank in the block and then we need to check our bearing clearance and this is what we're using to check our bearing clearance the tunnel was measured and the bearings were to suit the crank we have but you just want to make sure that everyone got all those steps right because you're looking at a failure or or a bad knock if it's not right i put painted marks on my socket to help me with a 60 degree turn so the caps get torqued down to 150 newton meters first and then a 60 degree turn. I'm starting on cap 4 and working my way out. I always torque the tab side of the bearing down like I was talking about before. I didn't take any video of it but all these bolts have been lubed with a anti-seize engine oil mixture on the bolt thread and on the washer and on the head of the bolt. Um, that's in another video. If you watch the other ones, I'm uh, pretty sure it's the piston pack one. I talk about how we make it. All it is is Loctite anti seize, like an 8700LB or an or a 8009LB uh, metal free anti seize, and then we just mix it with engine oil until it's a runny con consistency just to help with the bolts by the book it says just to use an SA30 like an SA30 engine oil um, on your bolts but um, I find 
the anti-seize engine oil mixture better and a lot of people rate it especially when you go to pull it down years later you'll be you'll be grateful you use that So that's the 150 newton meters done. So now we do our 60 degree torque turn. You have to torque the caps down like you're assembling the engine for the plaster gauge to work and get a proper bearing clearance reading. If you just tighten them up a little bit or hit them down with a rattle gun and then take your caps off and check your bearing clearance, it won't be correct. It's a bit of effort and um, some people don't see the point in checking your bearing clearance everything should be right but um, I just think it's cheap insurance you might be thinking I'd be better off using a rattle gun to do the torque turn and you are right except for when you use plaster gauge they don't recommend using a rattle gun you've got to use a bar it must be something to do with the vibrations i don't know i just if it says if i read it i'll just do it And once they're all torqued up, you go back through and undo them all and pull your caps off and you should get something like this. Uh, they look pretty good. They're all even. They're all about um, 6 thou. There you go. The clearance for this was about 2.5 to 7, 7 thou. So um, this is actually a brand new crank because we spun a bearing on our old crank. So we're happy with this. We need to clean the plaster gauge off the crank journal and off the bearings. Once they're clean, we've, got to, we've put cat assembly grease on everything. We've put our thrush washers in, the little brass thrush washers on journal 4. And then we lay our crank in. We put some grease on our um, main caps. Um, probably over grease them there, but I really don't see the harm in over greasing, it just squishes out. Then we go through the same step when we're doing our bearing clearance, we do the 150 newton meter torque down, and then we do a 60 degree torque turn. Standard practice for doing a torque turn on a bolt is to mark one point of the bolt head with a marker and then mark somewhere on the frame the next point over. So the next point over where that's pointing at, at the frame, you put a mark there and then when you put your socket on there and turn it 60 degrees and take your socket off, you'll see the two painted marks line up with each other and you'll know you've turned it 60 degrees and you can't mix it up that way. Because you don't want to be turning a bolt twice at 60 degrees because you'll, you'll over yield it and probably, and probably wreck it. If you watch the piss and pack video, um, I actually paint a bolt there and then turn it so you can get a look at it if you don't understand what I'm saying. 
And that's the process for installing a crank on this engine. There is one part I left out because I forgot to add it in was the you gotta check your end float on your crankshaft with a dial gauge so I'll put that in another video but um, if you like this click and subscribe thanks for watching